Greetings, folks. This is Jace. Oh, hang on, I didn't turn on my microphone up here, did I? Shit. Second audio sync. <laughs> Professionals at work. One more time. At least I know this now, not later. Greetings, folks. Jason McNamara here from jasonmcnamara.net. I'm at GitCon! Yeah, this is so exciting. Henny, come and say hello, please. I was gonna just. I was just gonna walk into your video and be annoying, but now you invited me and now it's not funny anymore. It's more funny because we're here. This is the important thing. This is the crazy guy who, he, this was his brainchild, his idea. I'm so stoked to be here, thank you, because as I've told you, I'm half German and I'm so excited. I'm in the motherland, yeah, yeah. Was ist los, mein Freund? Was ist los? What, why? He see he's upset. Why? Why he's did not, I have this idea? Why? He's not the craziest guy in the room anymore. I am. Because usually I am. Yeah, well, bad luck. And I can talk more shit than you can too. So. Oh, I've been setting up for four days. Give me a little bit of rest. Give me a little bit of food, and let's let's do a weird out Please video. Don't challenge okay. Me. Come on, don't challenge because I can. Nah, I don't know. I know. I've talked to him a couple times. I like to have fun. So here's what we're gonna do right now. This is an Ibanez unboxing video. Yes! We all know how much I love my Ibanez guitars. Daniel, come here. This is Daniel. He's the sales rep, is that right? Well, brand manager. Brand manager for Ibanez in Germany. Yeah, Austria, Eastern Europe as well. Wow! Yeah, the whole Big territory. That's, so how many countries are you involved with? Uh, eight, I guess. That's awesome. Yeah. Hello, Jen Majura. We're sorry you're not here. You're in South America, but we love you, and I wish you were here because you're just crazy batshit funny. We'd love awesome. you a little bit more if you were here. We'd, we'd Just a tiny bit more. Next year. Next year. Next year. There you go. Let's make that happen, Jim. We have the date for next year. I'll, 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 you know. You've bought a prototype of something? Unfortunately not. But he said you're bringing Martin a prototype. Martin is bringing it. Ma well, an artist might bring some of the... I don't know Martin who. Miller is coming. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, later, later this week, so... Yeah. Cats out of the bag. <laughs> so, let's get unboxing some eyebinners. That's what I want to do right now. I see we've got an uppercut I'll, I'll, here. I'll, I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and I send a pretty girl in. Okay. I kind of know what most of these models are anyway, but there's some cool stuff here. No, you don't, because they're all weird model numbers that no one knows. I live in Japan, hello. <laughs> this is Kiana. Now, this, Kiana's channel is Adventure Guitar, was, uh, I've got a Guitar Girl Adventure something, what's it the called again? The Adventures of Guitar Girl. The Adventures of Guitar Girl. She's a, a young up and coming guitar player who is doing something very brave, which she's learning in front of the world online. Yes. Which is awesome. <laughs> You did a little lesson with Nick Johnson. He's a great guy. Yes, absolutely. He that was, that so was a generous. fun lesson. Yeah, of course. Henning. I, I don't know how this works. He's just screwing up my video. That's all right. He Hi. does that. That's what editing's for, all right? Editing is for getting rid of those things that you don't want. That's why I love post-production editing. Filming here, filming on the session, filming over here on the Hero 5. We've got audio on both sides of this, so this is going to be a bit of fun. Let's get unboxing. This is Pixie Licks over here, by the way. Let's, uh, let, let's bring in the hero so that we can view here as well. Pixie Licks over here, his channel. Pixie Licks, can you spell that for people? <coughs> <laughs> That's exactly how it's spelt in native um, what one, uh, Bostonian. What one must remember when one spells Pixie okay. Licks let's just do it here. is uh, five X's and not sequentially. <laughs> there go. That does the job. All right, so we're gonna unbox Ibanez. Let's get into this. Let's just start with what's right here. Do we have a knife? We do have a knife. You call that a knife? That's a knife. Yeah, I'm Australian, hello. Uh, I know that one. Yeah. You're too young to even know what the hell that is, right? I don't know what that is. Oh, Kiana. She's 18, give her a break. Crocodile Dundee. If you don't know it, look it up. Great movie. Paul Hogan. What's his name? Paul Hogan. Paul Hogan. Paul Hogan. So. How much do you care about the packaging at the end of all of this? You don't care. Why am I the only one doing any unboxing here? We yeah, need yeah, an army of unboxers. What? You can get another box. There you go. Give me the... Uh, ah, yes. Diamond. Now, I used to work at Ishibashi Music in Tokyo, which I just left uh, four, three weeks ago, more? something. Yes. Um, but we had oh, this wait, model wait, in wait, store. This thing is gorgeous. This is an iron label. So it's an Indonesian made guitar, but it's actually really high quality. There are some Ibanezes which are Indonesian, which personally I'm not going to give a thumbs up, but these models, the iron labels, they put a lot of work into. Um, 
The top on this guitar, I've suddenly forgotten. I know it's not ash and I know it's... Not... What is this top again? I've forgotten. The open is ripped, doesn't it? No! <laughs> it's anti steam finish. Yes, I know, but I can't remember what the wood is. Whatever, I've suddenly forgotten. I'll have to put it on the screen. This is a beautiful instrument. Seven string bare knuckle pickups, which is interesting. An Indonesian guitar with bare knuckle pickups. Uh, kill switch or coil tap, I've forgotten now. Uh, but I have played this thing and it's got a nice neck on it. Uh, this is getting more back to the mid 90s style of how Ibanez were doing this stuff. Um, hang on, mid 90s? No, 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 sorry, sorry, early 2000s. Um, with, the bo uh, with the strip in the middle here. Henny's just trying to be weird because that's all he knows how to do. Do you know how to do normal? Didn't think so. So there's one down. What do you think about the binding color? You know, oddly enough, I like it on this guitar. I know it's a little bit too white, but I think it works really nicely with the color of the guitar. I actually like it. I wouldn't like it in a cream because I just don't think it would sit right with this particular model. I like it as it is. That, that, that's surely your opinion. Yeah. Well, he asked. <laughs> Might as well tell him how I think. Ah! Oh, yeah! <laughs> now, there you go. This is the Uppercut RG. Uh, the best thing about this guitar is the combination of bare knuckle pickups and an Ibanez Edge Low Pro. I freaking love this bridge, as everybody who knows me knows. The Low Pro is seriously the shit and then some. It's just amazingly nice. Um, this finish harks back to, they were doing a model of the uh, RG1570 back in the mid 2000s which had a matte finish, except that one felt kind of rubber. This looks like that, except it's a much, much, much smoother satin finish on this. But it certainly looks like the RG1570, but doesn't have the rubber feel. Beautiful, beautiful ebony fingerboard on this guitar. Um, it's also got some sort of a binding. I'm not quite sure what it is, but the binding is really nice black binding on there. What, what black binding, binding where? Spoon? For the guitar. For my schnitzel. Ah, oh, of course. You it's all a, I could find. You don't need, you don't have a fork for your schnitzel? This is all I could find. Okay. What, what black binding? Oh, this black binding? Yeah, yeah. This is nice. It is, it's beautiful. But the best thing is it's got the best bridge in the world as far as I'm concerned. I would absolutely support that. Yeah. I bet it's definitely made the best This tremolo. looks not quite so white. Not the same white as what the other one does, no. I'm going to eat my schnitzel now. Enjoy. That's beautiful. That's sexy as. And just to point it out, the model is called the RG6UCS and the colour is called MYF, which stands for... Mm, it's too obvious with an F, I'm just going to leave it alone. Now, the new Satriani model, this is the JS2480, if I'm not mistaken. JS2480. What happens when you're an Ibanez guy? Uh, so this one has the Sustainiac pickup in it with the three-way switch. Uh, regular Satriani style output on there, which is also on most of the artist models. Um, but this guitar is really cool. Now the neck on this guitar is a little bit different. So the Satriani's don't have the super thin wizard neck. So when you get back into the 80s and early 90s, you have 17 mil on the first fret and 19 mil up on the 12th fret. Whereas this guitar here has, I think, 20.5 here and 22 up here. How the fuck do you know all that? Because I'm a nerd. Are you that, embarrassed? That is, because I say it's got like, it's like, I don't know. You're that's like, what, that's my description of like, guitars in my I videos. Know, I don't might, know, I don't It might have a neck, maybe. It, it's, it's got a neck, possibly. So here's how I do it. What the? I've spent about 15 years of my life working retail in guitar shops in Australia and in Japan. And I kind of have to know this. When people walk into the store and talk to me, they want to know this. Because when, you, when you're presenting this on your channel, completely unpaid, I expect the guy from Ibanez just to like reach over and give you cash because it's like you're doing a presentation that is ridiculous and you're making me look bad. You're welcome. But you're, Go pretty good, you're pretty good at doing that yourself too. Making yourself look bad. <laughs> uh, this guitar, red is my favorite color on the planet. This guitar's red is absolutely sexy and gorgeous. So uh, 
Joe, you've done a great job. I'm sure Satriani himself will never, ever, ever watch this video. Um, but uh, if he does by chance see it, I want to compliment you on this muscle car red. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful color. It's a little bit different to the color on the 540 STN that I have, but uh, that's because this is muscle car and that was slightly sparkled, but wow, what a color. I'm not a big fan of matching headstock colors, but on this guitar I do like it. With the white one that he put out when he first did the uh, JS2400, the white body, black headstock, oh my god, that was a sexy look. 24 fret Satriani's though, holy crap, that is cool. And I just saw the other day online, there's a 24 yes. fret version of a more classic Satriani that's being re-released, and I can't think what it was. Yeah, no, there was something, but anyway. I love 24 frets, and, and the other reason I love them is because unlike most people, I can actually stretch from the 12 to the 24. Because i got big hands. Doesn't mean I'm that good of a player, it's got big hands. Jason, I think that's also the first one with a Sustainiac. Yes, it is. It's the very first model Joe's ever put out with a Sustainiac on it, and as, as a public release. I don't know if he used them personally, but that guitar is killer. Ah, another thing I want to explain, even though I don't have an amplifier right now to do it, with the Satriani, why I love the Satch so much is because you can have the gain cranked up on your amplifier and with a Satch, you can do that great thing of backing off the volume pot, leaving the full gain on. And what happens on most guitars, this included, is that it totally darkens out the tone. So it almost kind of becomes a bit like that. But you pop the switch and that one on the volume pot is a treble bleed essentially. So that way you can get the full brightness. So if you go on the neck pickup and you split the humbucker here to a single coil, you have both of those pots up and drop the volume down, you can get a very creamy Jimi Hendrix-like Stratocaster sound out of the Ibanez guitar. And then when you wanna crank it up for your solo and go real nuts in the later part of the solo, drop them both down, pop that on the bridge, pull that volume up, and you are screaming like a monster. That's the cool thing, if you have your amplifier set right and you do that with the Ibanez guitar on the Satriani model, once again, coil tap, treble bleed, as soon as you drop that volume pot, you can notice it. If you've got decent enough ears to pick it up, which is not overly hard to do, just listen for it, even if you're an inexperienced guitar player. Have a high gain sound or even a clean sound. Drop the volume pot down, even just like a small rotation, like even this much, all right? So essentially going down from 10 down to eight, and you will hear, not only is the volume dropped on a clean sound, and the gain's dropped a little bit on a dirty sound, the brightness just disappears off that little bit. Pop that up, and it totally comes back to life. The only issue with this guitar that I personally find is that when you drop the volume down to say around about what would be four, and then you pop it up, it goes from being so dark to being so bright, you almost need to drop the tone down just a little bit just to take that top end shrill off. But uh, as a guitar and as a setup, they're killer. That color is pretty badass. <laughs> I, I want, that it, uh, uh, that's called muscle car red. Oh, see, so to match the muscle car orange. Yes. Yeah, and right. yeah, that's such a thing these days. Three years ago. So yeah, muscle car purple, muscle car oh. muscle car. Listen to me. Muscle car purple, muscle car orange, muscle car black, and muscle car red so far. Right, so the purple and the right. So the the, the, the purple is probably from the Charger, right? It's like a metallic purple. I don't like yeah, the yeah. early. Yeah, from like you'd know the cars better from than like me. Guy from the Dodge Charger, and the orange is probably from the Charger. The red, maybe cattle. Oh, no, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. So this is Philip McKnight. Philip has his own YouTube channel. Philip, please tell the folks out there who don't know you, which most of them probably would, uh, about your channel. What is the focus on your channel? Uh, focus on the channel is uh, to explain different. Oh, there's the camera right there. To explain different types of things. Just uh, everything about guitars, how they work. Uh, the inner workings of the industry, stuff like that. Nice, cool. Yeah. I need to do a correction here. I made a mistake earlier. That's actually not a coil tap on this particular model with the Sustainiac in it. So the way this works here is that this turns the Sustainiac on and off. This switch here does a three-way thing. So this bottom position here turns the Sustainiac to normal. Up the top here it goes to harmonic, which essentially pulls it up an octave, and then in the middle is a mix, so you can get the dual version of that setting of those two there, and they're blended together there, with the on-off there. Okay, oh, this is nice. Now, Dean Wells from Terra, oh, hang on, this is a J Custom version, holy crap. I just got handed something I didn't expect. This is the neck through, okay, yes, yes, this is very nice. Now, it wouldn't be too many of these in Europe, I wouldn't imagine. This would probably be one of the only ones. 
J Custom is a whole nother ball game. This is a 2015, so this is a slightly older one. Oh, I know this model too. They made, if I'm not mistaken, in each color of this guitar, maybe two or three. Um, Damasio pickups, which ones I've forgotten. It has the Ibanez Edge, uh, Ibanez Edge Zero tremolo on here. Now, I personally don't like the Zero so much because it's a tighter feel, because you've got a totally different spring system in the back of this thing. This adjustment here, don't be mistaken if you don't know anything about this thing, this is not a tension adjustment in the same way that you would automatically assume it is. The trick with these bridges here to be able to get them to stay in tune is that when you go from being at a flat position here and then raise it like so essentially if I pull up on the bar or push down like that for that matter, it takes this block off of the steel rod that sits inside of there. And if you move it off and the rod itself doesn't actually adjust position, and then when you um, push down on the arm, or in this case without it, lift it up, and then it starts moving instantly like this, right, which you can see there is a slight bit of movement. This is set up in the perfect position and that is to adjust the wheel for that. The reason for adjusting that is if you put heavier strings in a different tuning, you need to adjust and compensate there correctly. These guitars come with 9 to 42s. Putting 10 to 46s on these and then trying to set that up right is an absolute nightmare. These guitars are built for 9 to 42, which is what most Ibanez players tend to use on their guitars because that's kind of a shredder's guitar and that's what shredders tend to like on their strings. Some dudes will play a heavier gauge of string because that's what they prefer, but this just tends to make a lot more sense coming out like that. Um, that said, if you want the original edge or the low pro edge feel, you just remove the two outside springs and remove the bar, and all of a sudden it goes up and down just like what a regular one does. Whereas when it's in like this, you can feel the zero point. Nerd Central, huh? That is a sexy ass guitar, mind you. Uh, what do we got next? This guitar, not a guitar. Let's have a quick look at that satch. Ooh, satchiness. And the uppercut same view. Here, you know more about this than I do. Ah, <laughs> now, there's a really important thing to talk about with these guitars. I'm not a jazz player. I've never been a jazz player. I can barely fake jazz. Gotta love that Ivan is straight out of the case and it's in tune. This is a jazz box made in China, and I have to say, as much as I loathe made in China guitars, Ibanez have, out of all the companies in the world, as far as I'm concerned, in their price point, and it's not just because I'm an Ibanez fan, it's because I sell guitar, well, did, up until a few weeks ago, sell guitars for a living. Um, the thing is that the Ibanez Chinese made jazz boxes are, for the bang for the buck, the best in the world. Um, it's not just because I'm an Ibanez player, like these guitars, got flat wounds on it. That was weird. That's better. This guitar has really good tone, just straight up, like that's loud acoustically. And then plugged in, both pickups are floating. <laughs> They sound really, really, really good, these guitars. They feel good, the necks are good on them. I'm not a big fan of lacquered necks, but these feel comfortable and work smoothly and well. So that's the whole point of that. But they're really nice guitars, and that's a beautiful blue on that guitar. It's been a bit over half an hour since I was doing this because I went and had some food and I'm about to commit one of the big scenes when you're in the middle of doing a video, which is pick up the camera and move it because before it gets dark outside, I want to show you a little bit about this joint and where I am. So I quickly jump in because please. I brought something for you. Oh, I got an Ibanez goodie bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an goodie bag. I'm so excited. <laughs> you don't need the catalog inside because you know yeah, it's anyways, I'm... but you know, I hope well, you I've got an Ibanez t-shirt and I love Ibanez t-shirts. <laughs> Yay! I've never seen this one before. Is this just for Europe? Uh, no, no, I think it's worldwide. I've never seen this one. Yeah, it's a nice one. Woohoo! 
We've got a new Ibanez shirt, although I'm wearing a Carnival shirt right now. Great Australian band. Check out Carnival, they're phenomenal. But uh, yes, thank you, Daniel. You're welcome. Very excited. And an Ibanez tote bag, too. So let's pick up the camera and get outside and show you guys where I am. To start with, this is the room that we are in. This is the Warwick Concert Hall, I believe. They actually do have a live venue as well, which this certainly looks like one. But this is the room that we're in here. And it's crazy. There's so many guitars I was doing before. Let's get outside and show you what it looks like. And that door's not open, that door's locked. I know this one over here opens, so let's use that button. Okay. Look at this gorgeous countryside out here. This is phenomenal. So let's get zoomed in a bit. Look at this around the factory. So stunning out here. Very German countryside looking place out there. We can maybe back out the zoom and show you at 24 mil, that was at 105. Back out at 24 mil. This place is just incredible. Warwick signs over there. It's one hell of an operation they've got out here. So I believe that might be the factory over there. And then obviously for the hole here, but wow, this place is just stunning. Oh, they're closing the shutters. I'm going to get in. It was good timing. I was going to come inside anyway. It's just kind of funny. Big glitter ball. Hello. This is Robert Keeley. Oh, hello, Hi Robert. There. How you doing? Is it Mr. Keeley himself? <laughs> How you doing? Wow, that's cool. Well, here you go. Uh, Brett Kingman might see this. Oh, yeah. He's a very good friend of mine. Hello, Brett. There you go. Hello, Brett. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to see you, Henny. <laughs> Um, wow, I didn't expect you too, I had no idea you were going to be here. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, so for all of you out there who have Keeley modded pedals or original Keeley pedals, that's the man right there. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. So it's amazing some of the people who are going to be here now. Here's another one which I'm super excited about. If you're ever like me, a fan of Racer X, John Aldretti, or if you're a fan of the Mars Volta, Juan Aldretti, which is the same guy, is going to be here as well. That's pretty exciting that he's going to be here. And I believe Phil X is going to be here. And um, is it? Oh, I forgot the name of the guy who does the channel with John Aldretti on the pedals. I want to say. Nick, I'm going to get his name wrong, Magnus something, anyway, he's going to be here as well, I'm sorry if you ever see this and I've forgotten your name, I haven't met you yet, so that's one saving grace for me, um, and it's just crazy, lots of people are starting to rock up and it's just going to be amazing, that's all there is to it, I'm very excited about this weekend, or this week rather. Back to the Ibanez unboxing, continuing on, inside of here is an S series grab my session so I can show you this as it comes out. Why not? Oh, I love that colour, my God. Look at this. What a colour. I have to say, the one thing I'm not a big fan of is the Gibraltar Bridge. I know that a lot of people seem to be getting this thing at the moment where they're changing out the Gibraltars for the hip shot. And I don't know who started that and why it's become such a thing. I haven't tried the hip shot bridge. I don't mind the bridge, but uh, I don't know. I personally am not so into it. I think the reason I might not be into it so much is I just don't like the way it looks. I know the tuning stability is all right and the sound is fine. I just don't really like the way it looks. Love the locking tuners. Love the neck profile. It's nice and slim, nice and thin. Um, but that top is just bloody beautiful. Look at that. I hope I remember to do an insert of a beautiful slow-mo shot with my macro lens. Now, inside of this case here is a guitar which I've already sold, I think, 
maybe in Japan I sold 10 or 12 of these already. Um, the Desert Sun Yellow Gem. Now when I say 10 or 12, I sold the mixture of the yellow, the shocking, or the Desert Sun Yellow, the shocking pink and the Loch Ness Green. I think I sold three or four Loch Ness Greens, um, probably two or three of the, oh hang on, how many did I sell? Probably around 10 anyway, and the shocking pink. I think actually I might have sold four of these one. I can't remember, but anyway. Um, these guitars, very faithful. For those of you out there who own either an original or own a reissue, please comment down in the YouTube box because I'm curious to hear your thoughts and feelings on this guitar. Um, I'm pretty sure that everybody who owns them is absolutely in love with them because otherwise they wouldn't have bought it. But uh, I'm curious to know. I don't think anybody would have been disappointed by their guitar. But, you know, I'm just curious to hear how you all feel about the guitars that you have. More and more people arriving. One of the other advantages about using shark guitar picks is you can open up boxes. So this, for those of you who don't know, is a road core. This is called an RC520 CA for Candy Apple Red. That Candy Apple Red is so faithful, it's exactly the same Candy Apple Red that's on the old Destroyers from 1981, 82, 83. Um, Adrian Smith used, hang on, no, no. I think Dave Murray in the Number of the Beast video used the red one and Adrian Smith used the uh, the amber, if I remember. I can't remember precisely now, but it's exactly the same shade of red in this as what was in that. Um, very cool. I like the Road Core Series guitars. They're lightweight. They've got the old dials from the old 1980s. Um, my DG555 has the same dials on them. Although mine has the Japanese ones, not the Chinese ones, but even still. I'm oh, sorry, Indonesian rather. Uh, bang for buck, excellent guitar, a lot of fun to play. For those of you who love an Ibanez guitar because you love the quality but you don't actually want the heavy metal, yeah, shredder guitar, this is a very, very cool option. And they make these guitars with different pickup configurations too. It's kind of nice that it's covered on the neck too. It looks classy. This one here is a model which, oh actually hang on, did I see this before or not? I'm just, I'm almost thinking I haven't seen it, but maybe I have. Okay, this is something I've seen similar to. This is an AKJV 800. This is them doing basically a distressed or as some companies call Relict or somebody's called Age and whatever um, version of their jazz box guitar. I saw the prototypes of some of these when I went down to the Ibanez factory, uh, sorry, to the Ibanez headquarters in Nagoya a while back um, and saw some of the early ones. The, uh, sorry, sorry, this is an AKJV90D. There we go. Don't, Daniel, don't be afraid to correct me on camera, it's right. fine. You're Jump right. in and be involved. <laughs> right. um, yeah, so this guitar has essentially the jazz vibe, but with a relic feel about it. Um, and I kind of like relic on, on some guitars. I just tend to find that for some reason, that bit of time spent with the guitar, beaten up and whatever, oddly enough, makes it sound good. <laughs> Uh, but this is a cool looking instrument and once again I'm not a jazz player but it's nice to check it out so let's have a look at this. Definitely not concert pitch. Maybe it is. I feel like that's E flat. It should be E? Okay, maybe it's just me. Nice guitar. Oh, that's nice. Look at this. So this is a Japanese made. This must be a reissue. It's an AS20G. Oh, sorry, AS200. Oh, it is a reissue. It's an um, AS200 reissue. This is gorgeous. Try switch, yes. So with this you can have humbucker, single coil or parallel. This is beautiful. I like these guitars. Not often you get a jazz guitar made out of uh, Japan from Ibanez these days, but these are very, very, very nice. Very similar to a John Schofield guitar actually. But wow, lovely, lovely, lovely instrument. Beautiful. There you go. Hey. 
It's down to the last one. And for the last guitar, we have a guitar, which is the Ibanez Premium. Comes in this semi-hard case, which is pretty cool. Nice, and if this is the model I think it is, I got a fun story to tell about this guitar too, if it is the one I think it is. And it is, although it's in the other color. So this guitar here, this is actually a very cool story for me to tell. This guitar here um, is the RG1070, made in Indonesia. It's the premium line guitar with the beautiful multi-laminate neck. And this thing is gorgeously strong because it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven pieces. Makes the neck very strong. The gorgeous color on the back, gorgeous color on the top. There is another version of this, which I forgot the name of the color. Daniel, can you correct me? The black one. What is the actual name of the black color? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, it's an there's a more exact name. It's like the system on, same so, specs. Same, same everything, so this is the blue version and then there's a black version as well. My friend Dean Wells from the band Terra Maze has just got himself a black one. He has the uh, red, which is the RG970, if I remember correctly, um, which has the same neck on it, but the uh, transparent red. Oh, hang on, no, no, hang on. That was called the RG... Uh, it's a limited edition six on the name. PCM. Anyway, P that's it, thank you, yeah, yeah, the PCM. Um, he had that and then he wanted to get another one and I set him up with uh, the Ibanez Artist Relations Manager and I don't know if they've hashed out an exact deal but Dean is an Ibanez artist to some degree now, he has a couple of them. Uh, I don't know exactly where his deal is at yet but Dean Wells, Terra Maze, if you don't know Terra Maze from Australia, definitely have a listen to that band because they are mind-blowingly good. They're uh, going to be working on a new record very shortly and Dean's already been posting on Instagram and Facebook some demo videos from their studio recording sessions, the demos, and they sound amazing. So he loves this guitar and he loves that neck. He loves the tremolo on this guitar because, see for me, I like the low pro because I like a real smooth flowing bridge. But for those of you that like having a lock in trem for the stability, but don't like that full on Floyd Rosey type of a vibe and you want something a little bit tighter, these are excellent for that. You can also drop D tune with these very easily because the way this system is set up, it's a much tighter feeling bridge. But once again, you can remove those two outer springs and get that free flow feel as well. Um, very, very, very nice guitar. And like I said, Dean Wells has got one. That's cool. So that's the last guitar in the bunch. Let's have a look at the full collection. I'm going to do a little behind the scenes of me making this just so you can see the lengths that I'm going to to be able to make this video look cool. was the setup for the very first ever GeekCon 2017 Ibanez range. Pretty excited to be amongst this. So there they are, the Ibanez range for GeekCon 2017, the very first one ever. 
Thanks for watching. I've been Jason McNamara from jasonmcnamara.net and my Jason McNamara YouTube channel. Links below for the things that you need pre-GitCon. So let's say day minus one for that matter because tomorrow's the first day. Look forward to you all sticking around for more GitCon coming up this week from Germany. It's so cool to be here. Rock on!